Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Moore. I'm going to introduce you to a couple of the power tools, starting off with the scroll saw. And we use the scroll saw quite a bit in the tech class for cutting wood to different uh, shapes for our projects, from cars to walnut crackers and all kinds of other um, wood projects, especially useful for cutting curved lines. Um, let me introduce you to a couple of the scroll saws we have today. Pay attention also to that we can adjust the speed of the blade on the scroll saw um, to account for what type of material we're cutting into. For example, uh, if we're cutting into wood, uh, we're going to use the higher speeds uh, on the blade. And if we're cutting into plastics, we want to slow the scroll saw blade way down so it prevents melting of that plastic. We have in the tech class, actually, three different models of scroll saw. And I'll introduce you to each one of them. And there's one, there's another, and uh, Probably the, the one that I'll start off with is the one that has most, um, most features attached to it. It has a light to actually illuminate your cutting area. Uh, it has a blower underneath this plastic lid. There's actually a little nozzle that blows air onto the area that you're cutting. And it has this hold down foot spring so that you can actually adjust um, the material underneath this hold down spring feature to hold it uh, better while you're cutting it. Uh, so we'll, we'll explain how that works. Also this uh, lid, the safety guide, guide, if you will, this little bonnet uh, covers there. So if there's any splinters that break free, that gives you an extra little level of protection. Underneath this uh, cutting I'll call this deck area. I'll scoot around to the other side here. You can see that uh, you simply turn this one on by turning the light button. Uh, when you turn this thing on, the blade starts moving. The further you turn it to the right, the faster the blade moves. So it's a simple on-off switch that way. Uh, some of the other models we have actually are controlled by a foot pedal. So you'll want to pick and choose which variety, which model works best for you. There are a couple real basic safety rules we need to go over when using any of the power tools in the room here. Actually, one of my favorite uh, scroll saws is this old Craftsman here. It's simple. It doesn't have the guard. The blower is over here. Uh, there's no light on it, but it's uh, super easy to use. And um, the speed dial is up on top. One of the nice things about this one is it's controlled with a foot pedal. So you have both your hands uh, free to hold onto your project while you control the speed of the blade with a foot pedal. It's pretty cool. Uh, the other ones, you have to reach up and turn the thing off. Uh, if something goes wrong or the blade gets stuck on a project. So what I'm going to do is just show you one of the blades uh, and parts of this saw and some safety things to consider. So this is scroll saw blade, super thin, uh, very sharp. Uh, but the main thing is to know that the only thing the scroll saw blade does is move straight up and down. Here it's fastened to the saw. The only thing it can do is press up and down, like the needle on a snowy sewing machine. So it can't hurt you as long as you keep your hands away from the blade itself. We painted a red zone here uh, as the cautionary uh, kind of keep your fingers out of or the no fly zone or where your fingers should be outside of this red area. So if you're holding the project coming in, hold it with two hands and keep your thumbs and fingers 
out of that red boundary zone and you'll be fine every time. Again, the blade can't jump out at you. It's going to stay in the same position, moving up and down only. All right, so uh, I've already demonstrated how this thing turns on, and that's the floor pedal, uh, the foot pedal on the floor. Uh, this blade should have a little bit of a tension to it, a tightness. So if you reach along the back edge where there's no teeth, it has a little bit of a guitar string sound to it. There's proper tension in the blade, and that's what you want. If the blade gets uh, stressed or cracks, let me know about it, and we, re we can replace that blade. Uh, if you don't have a hold down foot uh, built in, you're gonna have to hold the project securely uh, yourself. The main thing to remember when you come into this room back here is that you have to put safety glasses on or some kind of eye protection. Now, I'm not wearing those. I have my own glasses here. I'm gonna take those and set them aside. And you have two choices. If you wear prescription glasses, you can wear a safety goggle right here. You can put those over the top of your prescription glasses and you can see fine out of them that way. So that's an option. Otherwise, you can wear some of these and I'll put these ones on just to protect my eyes and everyone coming into this room uh, needs to put a pair of eye protection on. Whether or not you're gonna be using a tool, there could be something flying off of another machine uh, next to you. We just have to be prepared for that. Uh, so I'm goggled up and I wanna show you how this thing works. There's a couple other safety tips you need to know before starting this machine. All long hair needs to be tied back. Mine is tied back. Uh, sleeves, if you have a long sleeve t-shirt or sweatshirt, something like that, you need to roll up your sleeves or take that jacket off. Uh, you can't have any of these machines getting caught on your sleeves uh, or hair. Gloves also are no-no. Uh, you don't want to a lot of people are afraid of being cut by one of these blades, so they put a big bulky pair of uh, leather gloves on, which we have on another module. And you don't want any of these power tools catching on a pair of gloves and, uh, or cutting through the glove into your finger where you think that it, your finger might not be. So no gloves on this. You just want to see your hands, where they are in relationship to all the drill and uh, saw blades. Okay, that's important. Uh, cut away along lines. So plan out your project first. We're always cutting just outside of these lines, uh, right above this, and I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. There's a proper way to handle these curved lines. And what I would do here, uh, the saw blade is not very good at making right degree turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off first and then proceed to cut this shape off the top afterwards. The blade can't make this sharp turn right there where I'm pointing to. So we're gonna to have to do two cuts on this object. Um, keep fingers out of the cut zone and clean up your scraps afterwards. We have... Uh, on the back wall, a variety of dust pans and little whisk brooms. So make good use of those things. Don't leave the mess for someone else to clean up. We have a little scrap tub uh, over here off to the side. Uh, you just put your little scraps into just like that. Uh, let's go and see a cutout properly done on this um, car project. And one thing to remember uh, when cutting, which I didn't mention earlier, is uh, anytime you are cutting along a curve and you get to a place where you need to change direction, uh, you need to keep the saw blade moving. Uh, otherwise, it's going to bend this little thin blade and snap it. So whenever you're taking a turn, uh, changing direction, 
uh, you need to keep the saw blade moving or it will break that blade. It's very fragile side to side. Um, so this could use a little sanding, which we'll get to later. Uh, it's still rough all the way around the edges. I'll demonstrate the belt sander to you a little bit uh, on a different video segment. So there's the body of a car and a belt sander. So just to recap, uh, make sure that you understand the machine that you're using before you get to it. Uh, you're gonna need to wear a pair of safety glasses like these before you come into this room. You're going to need to understand where the power is and whether or not the mach machine is adjustable. In this case, the speed dial is up on top. Uh, whether it has a hold down foot uh, will determine whether or not you're having to put downward pressure on the, on the piece of wood that you're cutting. And if you hear this rattling while you're cutting it, that means you're pushing too fast. The rule of thumb for all the power tools in here is you need to let the blade do the, the work instead of forcing the project into the machine, let the machine do the work for you. So you shouldn't be forcing an object, whether it's plastic or wood, into this. Lights out. So just to finish off here, I'm gonna grab my little handy dandy dustpan and a broom. Do a little Super easy to do this, uh, and if you do this, and other people do this, this room is going to stay, stay very nice and clean. When you come up to it, it's been well cared for, that's what you want to see.